Hello everyone. This is a quick tutorial to the main concepts of Memorion, a very resourceful universal flashcard app. It will tell you about long-term learning with flashcards and about pre-learning and practicing with games. Memorion has a wizard to generate many language cards and quality statistics to show your progress. The different GUI levels give you a smooth start and many possibilities as an expert user. Some methods to import and share cards are shown and one of the many ways to create cards directly on the device. Finally, a brief introduction to configuring stacks and program preferences. But let's start with the basic learning process. Active Recall activates the remembering pathways of your brain and stimulates long-term memory formation. For each card, you are presented with a question. You think about the answer and after turning, you grade yourself how well you remembered it. That can range from easy to not known and will determine when you see the card again. The beauty is Memorion takes care of when. You don't have to worry about this. You just repeat this for all cards that are due today. To further stimulate the recall, you can configure Memorion to let you type the answer, which for example is great for accents and French. Or you draw them, perfect for non-Latin scripts or chemical formulas. Multiple choice can be used for images, formulas or proverbs. The interval between reviews typically doubles to triples and within seven recalls you reach intervals of several years. That makes it so efficient. Games are another excellent way to study facts, most of them based on passive recall. That means you just have to recognize or deduce the right answer from several choices. This is perfect to pre-learn new material or to leisurely practice facts you have already learned. The good thing, there is no commitment in this, no follow-ups. You do this whenever and as long as you enjoy. A few audiovisual games are available, more are planned. Memorian has for your convenience, many, many language cards already built in. First, you choose the language you want to learn from a steadily increasing selection. Next, you pick a category. Altogether, there are about 700 words. Memorion supports multiple asking directions in parallel. An increasing number of cards has images attached to them. To stay motivated while learning, you need a feedback system. And that's where the statistics come in. On this daily progress plot, the smiley level indicates how much work you have done on the previous days. Meanwhile, the color of the halo shows how persistent you have been. Blue, for example, means I have not missed a single day for at least 10 days. And then there are graphs about every measure you can think of. Plots of past and future work, a histogram of intervals, of answers, of difficulties. Just too many to be mentioned. When you load or create cards, they are in an inactive state, meaning they are not participating in the learning process. This number tells you how many cards of the stack are automatically activated to learning every day. This can be changed in the stack configuration. To manually select extra cards to learn, you enter the stack, select them and tap commit. And Memorion takes care that you will never really forget them. To remove cards from learning again, you tap release. The cards are still there, but are inactive again, and the learning progress information is lost. Or you delete them completely from the database. When you start with Memorion, the user interface is really minimal, focusing purely on learning and playing. But also as a beginner, you can switch to a stack view, giving you some basic functions to create and delete, plot and edit stacks or cards. In the expert mode, many more options and a multi-level stack organization becomes available, both on the learning tab and on the editing tab. The later offers cut, copy, paste, configuring of stacks, as well as import and export functions. When you select items, another set of powerful tools can operate on these. The language wizard is just one way to create more cards. Many millions more can be found online from various sources. I prefer Quizlet or Supermemo. When you have learned the built-in cards, I recommend creating your own. You can conveniently create them as a Word or an Excel table on a PC or Mac and import them directly. 
Yes, typing them is indeed work, but also the first step of learning and you are in control of what you include and not somebody else. When you have problems importing cards from other programs, I can most probably help you out. You can share your database, a selection or plots with others. Sharing your database with a cloud service also serves as an external backup in case you lose or break your device. You want to change the way the cards are shown, change the asking direction? This is done on a stack-by-stack -stack basis using the configuration dialog, similar to the language wizard. The stack type defines the general purpose of this stack. Changing the language has only an effect on the text-to-speech engines and on the dictionaries selected, not on the card content itself. The asking direction changes only how the cards are displayed, again, not the card contents. Autocommit sets the number of cards that are automatically added to the learning process every day, but only when you have learned the previous ones. Of course, the stack name can be changed. Tapping the previews sets the background color of the cards. Many more properties can be found under the expert configuration. Preferences are program-wide, not per stack. As a beginner, you can change a few settings. For example, change the font size within the lists, make it suitable for your device, or set the general color scheme of the program. Here you can find the right balance between reminded as needed and not being annoying. The native language gets a special treatment, for example, for dictionaries and text-to-speech. The preferred languages show up first in language selections. The question mark gives you specific help. Also use it when exploring the many more settings as an expert. Besides loading big chunks of cards from other sources, Memorian can also help you create cards on the fly, for example, while reading a foreign language book. For this, you first go to the stack where you want to add the card. The wizard has also other helpers to create cards based on spontaneous photo or audio recordings. But we will use a third-party dictionary from Ponsier. Looking up the word, this dictionary offers us too much information. But there are tools to pick just what we want. We tell Memorian to also create a twin card in a stack with the inverse asking direction. And on the card, we quickly add an image from a Google search to sprouse the card up. Done. Isn't it looking perfect? And this is only one of the methods. You can, for example, share text directly from other programs to create cards. This tutorial can only go through the basic features of Memorian. If you have more questions, there is an extensive help system. One way is to get help directly for every item on the screen using context help. Some important or rare functions show context help directly when used, but this stops when you acknowledge the reading. Same holds for the light bulb help. The bulb comes up when the app is started. You can switch these back on in the expert mode preferences under help. Also, there is a list of short texts describing the features an FAQ and a glossary. You can search all help texts and everything is available offline. Stay tuned, there will be more videos with in-depth tutorials and how-tos in the future.